I've had countless genetic tests before and I shared all of them with you. I know about all my medication sensitivities, what genetic risks I have for diseases, for cancer types, I know about all that. But when sequencing.com reached out, I couldn't say no. I was happy to dive in again, maybe to reconfirm some previous findings, maybe to get new ones. This is a platform for genetic analysis and they provide comprehensive insights into wellness, health, medication reactions and genealogy by analyzing the entire genome. As always, there was no sponsorship or payment involved. I just asked for a free test and I received it. The sampling process is almost always the same for genetic analysis. You have to provide a buckle sweat sample. And after that, the sample went back into the package. I sent it back and I waited for about four, five weeks, which is quite standard for whole genome sequencing. And then my results arrived on the sequencing.com platform, a whole dashboard. On the platform, the company described what kind of categories they will focus on. Nutritional and metabolic health, medication and drug response, brain health, cardiovascular health, cancer risk. And they also provided two more detailed analysis. One is called Healthcare Pro and one is Wellness and Longevity. The first is more about clinical insights I should know about based on the genetic variants I have. Second is more about lifestyle choices I can make based on similar variants. Now, I will share some of the results and findings with you, which I think are either clinically important or could be beneficial for my own health and longevity. And I have four categories to discuss. The first is about some lucky ones. There's a condition, at least a variant I have for the condition is called MGCA1. You will see the whole abbreviation on the screen. It's a very rare inherited metabolic disorder. I only have one variant of this. I'm a carrier of this condition. If both of my parents had been carriers about this, then I might have had a neurological quite serious condition. Why it's important now? If we were before family planning, but we have two kids and we don't plan to have more, but if we were before family planning, I should definitely know about this and get my partner checked out for the same genetic variant. Because if we both give this variant to our kids, they might develop an important neurological condition. The second group is about the medication sensitivities that I have. It's something very definitive. If you have these variants, you will have medication sensitivities. It's not whether you have a risk for something, then you have to deal with that with lifestyle choices and medications, but whether you have it or not. This list is extremely important because I can make much better decisions with my physicians having this list than without it. For example, if I have to take a cholesterol lowering medication anytime in my life, I might develop very important serious side effects. So it's something we have to discuss before deciding to go for those medications. Also for some other medications, at least if I have to take them anytime in my life for those specific conditions, I will have the information because either I metabolize these drugs differently or the dosage will have to be different. Either way, it's very important to have this list ready when you have to decide upon a medication with your primary care physician. Number three is about cancer risks. And now I have to discuss what the sequencing.com platform provides when you check your results. First of all, the report describes how many conditions they screen for, how many genes, gene variants they screen for in general. And for every single result, they will give you a confidence level. That's very important. If they say with high confidence, we found these risks, possible risks, carrier statuses and medication sensitivities, then I know that their genetic counselors, their researchers, their software, all this package is confident that I have that risk or scarier status or medication sensitivity. If it's medium or low confidence, you know to take it with a pinch of salt. Now, for cancer risks, I had medium confidence categories for two cancer types, lung cancer and lip and oral cavity carcinoma. It's good to know about them. I think I get these checked out every year or so. So uh, at least I don't see what other things I could do to try to prevent these conditions from happening. I never smoked. I don't plan to take up smoking. So that's on the table. The fourth group is the Healthcare Pro Report. Very long, very detailed PDF about a lot of insights and pieces of information about genetic risks and things I should know about from cancer types to just things in my impact in my lifestyle choices. But at this point, as someone coming from genetics before becoming a radical futurist, I have to describe that usually genetics slows the gun, but lifestyle pulls the trigger. So even if you have a high risk genetically for a certain civilizational condition like diabetes, it doesn't mean that you will get the condition. Your lifestyle matters a lot and vice versa. Maybe you make a lot of mistakes in your lifestyle to get diabetes, but if you have a very low genetic risk, 
it can also balance these things out. So again, take this with a pinch of salt. But here are a few things I've learned, which I think clinically could be important. I have genetic risk for hypercholesterinemia, meaning that even if I have higher cholesterol levels, it's usually not because of I make mistakes in my diet. It's because genetically I'm prone to this condition. I might have a chance for having higher cholesterol levels than the population average, and I have to deal with that. I could take cholesterol lowering medications, but you know that I cannot based on my medication sensitivity report, so we will have to look for plan B and plan C options. I have a factor laden deficiency, which means I have a high risk for deep vein thrombosis. It's quite crucial, and now I will go to a specialist in thrombosis medications to find out what kind of decisions I should make in my lifestyle or health management. If I take a long flight, do I have to take a medication to lower my chance for deep vein thrombosis? So how to go from now, I'm 40, until 100, deal, hopefully dealing with this condition. I have high risk for cardiovascular conditions, not sudden cardiac death, but in general cardiovascular conditions, but I just had a cardio CT examination, a full cardiological report. So. I will you know, keep an eye on that. Now, every year, every two or three years, I will get these examinations and keep an eye on that. But the report also specifies that if I become obese, if I start smoking, if I start taking medications, then my chance for that condition would really be higher. But just the genetic risk alone is not enough if I try to live a healthy life, have a Mediterranean diet, I exercise a lot. And I have a high chance, really high chance, for knee osteoarthritis. So the report specified that maybe I should give up running and playing football, and instead of that, maybe swimming and cycling would be better choices. I don't want to do that. I love football too much to, to just leave it behind me. But I go to a manual therapist every three weeks. I go to sport massages. I try to take very good care of my muscles around my knee, so at least I keep an eye on that. If everything gets worse, of course, then I will make those hard choices. I have a genetic risk for atrial fibrillation, AFib. I just had ECG uh, and all the cardiological examinations. I don't have it now, but my smartwatch is also capable of detecting AFib in time. So hopefully, if it develops, if I develop that condition later, my technology will help me find it in time. I have risks for colon cancer and melanoma. I have colonoscopies every five years. I just had one. I, my skin lesions are getting checked out every year. I just had them checked out, so hopefully I can keep all these checked out. I have a chance for brain aneurysm. A few weeks ago, I had a brain MRI. No signs of that. We will keep an eye on this information. And some, I think, useless stuff, like I have a genetic risk for noise-induced hair loss, okay? And asthma, I'm 40. It's not on the table anymore. And the last thing, I have a genetic risk for developing lactose intolerance as an adult. And I think I just did. Some future considerations. First of all, there is generative AI built into the platform, so you have a chance to have discussions about your genetic results with a generative AI trained on such models. It could be a, you know, an interesting way of summarizing all the findings and, and finding out which ones have actionable insights and, and what practical steps you should take now going forward in your balance and longevity. The second issue is that the company can update your report with new information. Genetic studies come out almost every single day. There are so many things we learn along the way that it makes sense to keep on updating your report with new findings coming from those studies. Also, there is a marketplace of reports. So you might wonder you know, what the cost of such a service could be. It, the cost is between $3.99 US dollars to even $9.99 depending on the package you choose. But even if you choose the, the lowest package, you can still buy reports, like specific genetic analysis, like about lactose intolerance, about your wellness insights, medication sensitivity, beyond the, the minimal package of analysis that you receive with that first tier. And the third thing, there are many, you know, uncertain categories, low confidence level findings, or medium confidence. What do you do with those? What does it mean that my chance for cardiovascular conditions is like 57% with medium confidence, while the average population is 41%. So it's very important to discuss the results with a genetic counselor. Genetic counselors understand all these findings and they can help you find out the actionable steps. And I plan to do that because without that, it's just data being purely put on the table and you will not be able to find out what to do 
about all that. But with a genetic counselor, you can find out, you can create a pathway for yourself. This is what I know about my genetics. Here is my lifestyle. Let's find out if I have to do anything differently from now on to lower the risks of these conditions. So all in all, that was my whole genome sequencing experience with sequencing.com. Many thanks to them for the offer. And I cannot wait to hear what you find out about your own genetic testing services. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe below to get notified about every single new video we come up with. And also please go to medicalfuturist.thinkific.com where you will find our two courses, the Digital Health course and our newest one, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence in Medicine and Healthcare. See you there.